it on the magazine cover of, uh, of you know, like popular mechanics. GE did a campaign. And what they did was they would say, open your laptop, put a webcam, and then point your, uh, point your magazine at the webcam. And then on the screen, you could see like GE's wind farms come alive, and you could learn about windmills and wind energy and that sort of thing. So it's really interesting. But if you think of the experience, I'm standing like this, and I have to look like this. So the, the, it's, it's nice that they did that, and it's, it's interesting that uh, people are experimenting with AR. But I think the true potential of AR is when you're carrying your phone, because now this is a magic lens, right? You point at any real world object, and the object can come alive. It can show you things that you've never seen before. Think about, I think there are two things we talk about here. One is interactivity at the point of sale, and the other one is interactivity at the point of advertising. So point of sale, you walk into a supermarket, right? You walk into a retail aisle, there are lots of cereal boxes out there, all kinds of other products. You point your phone at it, you have an experience that's tailored to differentiate the product on the retail aisle. And then you, you play, maybe you play a little game, you win a coupon. It's real co consumer engagement at the point of sale. Now, I'm not saying that people have figured out this experience as yet. I think it's still clunky. Some, people are, uh, some developers are experimenting, and I've seen a couple of options for this. Nothing that I would say is like grabbing you, but I think there's a lot of potential to innovate out here. The other place is uh, the point of advertising. Now, if you think about it traditionally, you, know, you, put, a, you put an ad in a newspaper, you kind of know that roughly it reaches a certain demographic. But beyond that, you, know, you put some sh SMS shop codes in there. There's some trying to grab people's attention. But here's a way to really grab someone's attention, right? Because now when you point your smartphone at it, maybe the ad for a car just bursts open and the car comes out of the newspaper. And it does all, and you can visualize the car from different angles, you can customize it. This is a real example. I'm not, this is not something I'm making up. Mercedes-Benz actually did an example like this. It's, um, it's available in the Android market. Uh, it's called, it's in German, but it's uh, C-Class accessories or something. You can go and customize the accessories on it. It's like a pilot project that they're trying out. So people are experimenting. So I think there's a, there's a real way of sort of engaging and seeing how that advertisement talks back to you. Uh, and that gives you a measure of you know, uh, sort of user engagement with the advertisement itself. And the same thing is true for movie posters. Right? You put movie posters out there, and then yeah, kind of you look for it. You look at uh, what the show times are, and you see uh, you know, the posters are all about the stars. Right? But now maybe there's a way to experiment with it in a different way. You can build sort of social games with AR enabled in them. Um, uh, you know, there, you'll see some stuff, <laughs> interesting stuff, even in India coming up. Uh, from what I heard from some local developers. So some real potential out there. Not, I haven't yet seen a lot of uh, good things actually in the market. And the last one is really instructional. So instructional apps are really how AR got started as a technology, going back to uh, its days in Boeing. So in aircraft maintenance, there was this guy, a technician, who would have to go and look at all the cables and make sure they're all OK. And, the only, and there's this mass of cables, right? And the only way you could do that was to look at another huge mass of a user manual. So you'd flip the user manual and then look up like that, which is a very painful way. So what they did was they gave him a head-mounted display and a very powerful computer, a huge one that he could just carry around or connect to. And then when you would look up, the entire cabling diagram would be overlaid on his head-mounted display. And then you know he could, he could say, OK, step one, cut this cable. Step two, clean this. And you give him step-by-step instructions. That was really, really useful, and that's how you know, this is, AI has tremendous use in industrial applications, not just aircraft, but also automotive and uh, sort of machine tools and all that. What we've done is by making that available on your mobile phone now, you can bring consumer class AI applications. Think about your washing machine. I only know one cycle, right? OK, run, stop, that's it. But if I want to run a delicate cycle, I don't know exactly what knobs to turn. So now your phone becomes a user manual where I just pointed, and it's a see-through user manual, where it directly tells me, press this button first. OK, then turn this knob here. So this notion of giving you step-by-step -step instructions directly on the, on the consumer appliance, that's really great. I never knew how to make a conference call on my desktop phone. <laughs> but now I know because I got someone to build an app that did exactly that, showed me step-by-step -step instructions saying, press here, dial here for the first number, press the conference button, press the more button. That, so this, this idea of giving you, you know, very clear instructions, uh, I think, is, again, extremely powerful. And then in the future, you know, there are a whole category of applications that can come out. I think text translation and recognition is one. So you know, a lot of companies are working in that, Qualcomm included. 
Uh, the other is visual search. If you're familiar with Google Goggles, that's an example of visual search. Um, where you, you, know, you take a picture, and then it sends the picture to the server, recognizes it, and then it comes back to the web page or some results, some set of results. Um, I think you know, this whole process of clicking, waiting, sending, receiving, I think we can improve on that with AR. You can just scan objects, and directly you'll start seeing things coming in and appearing. So again, something in the future that we'll get. And then finally, navigation and discovery. And this is sort of like you know, coming back to the GPS and compass space guys, what they're trying to do is really that. But in order to, is, you know, you point your phone and, or the road, and then you can see arrows saying, go this way or go that way. It gives you sort of pedestrian navigation or even driving navigation instructions. That sort of thing is really far off. Um, uh, you know, I think that uh, it requires all kinds of uh, back-end assets uh, that very few companies have, uh, you know, street view type imagery that I think only Google and Microsoft and maybe Nokia has. Okay, so let's, let's see some examples of applications that have been built with the SDK. This, is actually, this video is actually pretty old. Last year when we launched the SDK, we, um, we started a contest, a $200,000 contest, and we invited applications. We got about 50 applications from 22 countries. We had a few from India too. Um, so here's a sort of compilation of all the application of some of the applications um, that were submitted, and there are no viruses. Oops. So that was a quick compilation of videos. Like I said, this, these, are, these examples are really old. They're about six months now. There are many, many new applications. There are more than 100 apps in the Android market and iOS App Store. Um, OK, so let's talk about the Qualcomm AR platform. I think I have about 25 minutes. So I'm trying to go pick up the pace here. Um, so the goal, for our, from my perspective, is to enable you guys as developers to build 3D applications for the real world just as it is easy today 
to build games and 3D applications for virtual worlds. So what that means is basically provide the best possible augmented reality technology packaged in a way with the lowest barriers of entry for any developer work with the best available tools in the market. So let's see. And the, so when we look at what we have today is we've taken very, very advanced computer vision capabilities. We've added some interesting interactions to this that you won't see in traditional sort of virtual games and then integrated it with a wide variety of tools, Eclipse, Xcode, and Unity, which is a cross-platform game engine that allows you to quickly build for Android and iOS. Um, and you know, as far as performance is concerned, I think it's head and shoulders about anything else you'll see in the market. And it's free, completely free. You can download the SDK, build apps, distribute them. There's no payment to Quokka. Okay, the best way to introduce some of the key SDK features in terms of what it can recognize is actually to show you a video of the sample applications that we bundle with the app. Each, each sample app talks about a very specific computer vision capability. The ability to recognize, say, natural feature images, which is basically any image in the world, an image of all of us sitting here together would, be, would, would qualify for that one. Uh, a special type of marker, which is not as bad as a black and white barcode, but, and not as good as a <laughs> regular image, but somewhere in between, uh, that allows you to sort of work with images that don't generally work with computer vision. Um, and then simple 3D, box, uh, 3D objects like boxes, but really basically multi-planar detection and tracking. So let me show you guys this. You'll still hear me talk. <laughs> The spot on augmented reality platform is a computer vision based solution that offers a software development kit or SDK to developers to build compelling and exciting augmented reality applications. The SDK is freely available to download, and we've included a number of sample apps to help kickstart development. The image target sample app is actually the entry point for all developers. It's really the first application that developers should look at to understand how to use the SDK and how to render a simple 3D graphic on top of a real world image. For example, uh, stones. Uh, there could really be any image that you take which has sufficient detail uh, and that can be tracked. The frame markers allow you to track any image within a little black boundary around it. The frame markers can actually be much smaller than image targets, and you can have many frame markers tracked simultaneously. The SDK provides about 512 frame markers, and you can pick any of them uh, to work with your application. In the frame marker sample app, what you'll see is we've taken the first four frame markers, which have actually predefined IDs 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then we've rendered some simple 3D alphabets on them, in this case, QCAR, which is our platform. The advantage that you have with frame markers is that within the black boundary, you can have pretty much any image you want. Multi-image targets actually introduces a very interesting new concept to the SDK, the ability to detect and track simple 3D objects such as boxes. If you notice our sample app, we actually have a little graphic which is a bowl revolving around the 3D box. And what that shows is really we are detecting and tracking in 3D, and as you turn the box around, the bowl is actually occluded. That's a very interesting feature of our SDK. <laughs> The virtual buttons are a new form of interaction. They're actually interactions with the real world. We allow the developer to mark certain regions of interest on an actual image target. In our sample app, we have four virtual buttons on the image target itself. And when we press each of those buttons, it changes the color of the teapot that's rendered on the printer target. So it's a very different form of interaction that's not available in non-AR applications. Dominoes is actually a simple game that shows how to integrate various features of the SDK with different components in the Android operating system. Some of these components are only available in Java, and some of them are available in the native side of Android. So we want to build one complete app that actually shows a developer how to use these very efficiently. In our app, we have a series of dominoes that appear on the stones target, and then you can trigger them using either an on-screen button press or a virtual button, and it has sound. 
And what that shows you is how to integrate sound, which is available mostly on the Java side, with the native parts of the SDK. We have a comprehensive AI platform with cutting edge features. We have a great community of developers and fantastic technical support. And the best of all, it's free. So I'd like to invite every developer out there to come and try our SDK and build exciting new applications. Okay, so that was a very, uh, very, very quick introduction to this, uh, to the key features of the SDK. But hopefully, you got a sense of the types of objects we can detect and track. Uh, you know, the real virtual button interaction, which is actually you know something where you can physically touch a real world object, and it'll actually trigger a button press event that you can then go and do something interesting with. So this is again, this is sort of just reiterating the types of things we can recognize. The image targets, for examples, would be game balls, posters, the frame markers. You know, the idea of behind frame markers is because they can be really tiny, you can use them as game pieces or interactive elements within a broader AR experience. And then very simple uh, 3D objects like boxes. But it could be actually, you could walk the 3D objects in any ways. You can create any kind of multi-planar uh, scene, if you will. Uh, this is virtual buttons. One thing on that I do want to talk about is sort of the user environment. So where can you use this technology? How far can you be from this stuff? For most of it, we say, you know, you can use it, you can, you can have an AR experience either on the table, the floor, the wall, or if you're in a retail aisle of a supermarket. So it's sort of more field usage exper experiences where you're not too far away from the object. Of course, it depends on the relative size of the object too, but, uh, but generally something that you're not like hundreds of meters away. So this whole class of applications like outdoor apps where you go and point your phone in any general direction and recognize a building or a monument Trees, clouds, by the way, I've got all these questions before. Can it recognize clouds? Um, just, no, we can't do that. Um, so what does developing with Qualcomm's platform look like? If you've done any kind of mobile app development before, it's no different. We provide a library that your app will link to, and in your app, you have all the app assets and business logic for what kind of content that you want to augment, where you want to put it, all that's up to you, and you can bring in any kind of rendering engine you want. Because you need, or you can write to OpenGL directly, or uh, if if you if you have that skill set. But basically, our library has all the uh, computer vision magic inside that says, oh, okay, I can detect and track and give you real time updates as to where the camera is relative to the image. Um, and then along with that, you need to tell our library what images you want recognized, and that's what we call the target resources. And these target resources are just you know um, are created offline. On our web portal, we have a tool that allows you to submit a JPEG or a PNG image, and out comes a, uh, a target resource file, um, so a DAT file, that you just download and then bundle with your application. So it's really that simple. It's very, very easy to use. So if you're, on, on, in terms of tools and uh, what kinds of tools and supported operating systems, we do support all Android 2.1 devices and above, as long as it has support for ARM v6 instruction set. So that's by and large, pretty much all the devices. Um, on the iOS side, you know, we, we work with uh, Xcode and we support iPhone 3GS and above. Uh, so no iPhone 3, but 3GS, iPhone 4, 4 iOS, iPad 2, anything with iOS 4 and above, we do support. Um, if you if if you want to work with your own rendering engine, then we offer the basically we offer the SDK in two flavors. One that we call the core SDK or native SDK that works with any kind of tool or rendering engine that you would like to work with. And I haven't seen a lot of people work with this on Android, but on iOS I do know that a lot of them are experiment with multiple rendering engines. Um, or you, if you're not, if you don't want to, want to do, or if you're not familiar with OpenGL or don't want to work with a third-party rendering engine, you can work with Unity. Unity, if, if Unity is the leading mobile game engine, right? Any time um, in the iOS App Store, the top 25 games, 40, 50 percent are built with Unity. It's a really powerful tool, and I'll show you in a second how, how really well integrated it is. And we provide an extension for that tool that you can. It's like a plugin that you just pull in and integrate, and um, that's it. The extension is free, but the tool is not. Um, that's just you know, but it's not it's not that expensive either. The whole idea behind Unity is to democratize game and uh, game development, so it's it's fairly cheap. There are multiple tiers. There's a trial version also, and the trial version actually is a 30-day trial. And I know a lot of developers have built apps within 30 days and released it in the in the, in the market. <laughs> it's it's really really powerful tool that you can work with very quickly. Um, 
Uh, URL, of course, is the developer.qualcom.com slash AR. Uh, here's, a, here's a screenshot. I actually don't have time to go over this, but here's a screenshot of the target management system. And this is really the web portal uh, and the tool that allows you to submit images. Um, and you know, either you can download the target resources. So here's what a sample screenshot would look like. You'll notice that I want to draw your attention to the, to the rating. So the rating tells you how, how trackable a particular image is, how good it is for detection and tracking. And, just, and, and it's, it's really nice. When you have a slightly lower rating, it actually gives you hints on how to improve it. So it'll tell you maybe you know, bump up the contrast a little bit here and there. So you just go back into your favorite photo editing tool, like I don't know, Photoshop is one that I'm familiar with, but I'm sure there are other options. And then you, know, you change things around a little bit and then submit it again. So it tries to help you, but you know, invariably there's going to be certain types of images that you just cannot recognize. Solid black color is an example of that. Can't do it. Any kind of solid color you can't. There's got to be some variation and detail to it. <coughs> Excuse me. That's how the algorithms work. So we've had a lot of developer attraction and interest in this. We, um, we launched this on October 4th last year as a beta, and we had a really long beta for Android, you know, just trying to iron out all the kinks, make the tools really workable. Um, but tremendous amount of success with it. Today, uh, you know, I think I'd this is like, these figures are about two or three weeks old. We have more than 14,000 developers um, and more than hundreds of apps, uh, more than 100 apps, excuse me, not hundreds, more than 100 apps in the Android market and iOS app store in the last four or five months that it's been, that we've been, that we've allowed commercial apps to go through. During the beta, no one was allowed to commercialize any apps. Uh, yeah, tons of countries. For me, the most important thing is this, right? You go, if you go to our forums, there are thousands of posts. And at any point in time, there are like hundreds of people online looking and browsing um, and actually asking questions and helping each other. And that to me is real drop attraction because we're building a community here. I mean, downloads, registrations, all that's great. But at the end of the day, what is like what is the activity with this tool? That that's that's what I think is a is a true metric for success. And so far, I'm seeing a lot of that interest. Okay, time for the tutorial. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is let me actually show you the app I'm going to build first. It's whoops. that we built for showing off demos. Uh, it's a hard one to take through airport security, but it usually ha it's actually has a handle here that looks like a gun, but uh, <laughs> I took that out for this particular trip. Let me show you, but it's nothing, it's just a contraption. Everything is done on the phone. Um, there's, a little, uh, there's a little camera here, there's a phone, phone holder, that's it. This is a standard Android phone, it's an HTC Desire HD, I think, and it's, you know, yeah. Now you know. So let me show you what I'm actually going to build. It's a little app, and all it's going to do is, oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, so this is a real world, right? So it's going to recognize this piece of Paper. It's going to put a teapot, and then I'm going to have a virtual button interaction, and you're going to see steam coming out. It's as simple as that. Okay. So here's my teapot. Right. So you can see how well it's tracked. Now let's see if I can get the virtual button thing. Okay. We're going to build this app. I haven't built it. We're going to build this app from scratch. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start up Unity, and I'll give you a quick, t how, uh, how much time do we have? For 10 minutes? Okay. Try to do it in under 10. Okay. So when you first start up Unity, right, it will open up the previous project that you created. In this case, I actually purposefully brought this one up because this is the, this is the project we're going to create. Once we finish creation, this is what it will look like. Let me spend a minute talking about Unity. So this is like a nice WYSIWYG editor, right? This main view here is it will automatically correct itself in the, in the scene, which gives you a nice visual indication of the whole thing. Um, then this inspector is actually pretty cool. So what this inspector does is if I click on this, right, it shows you the characteristics of that particular object. Um, and you can, you know, the XYZ position, uh, this, this, these are AR-specific 
um, characteristics, but any, any kind of scripts that you've attached to that object will all show up here. So it's a really quick view of, uh, a quick view of the project, of the, of the prefab itself. I use the word prefab. So prefab is a unity construct. Basically, it's just, um, it's just an object with all kinds of characteristics attached to it, scripts and um, uh, special behaviors attached to it, that's all. And you know, so the prefabs will appear out here and then you essentially drag and drop, pre create instances of the prefab in this particular hierarchical view. So that's the quick intro to, uh, to Unity. Let me create this from scratch. So we'll do a new project, right? I'll, I don't care, let's just call it Project 25. <clears throat> okay, so by default it comes and we'll show, you'll see the main camera out here. Okay, so the main camera is the Unity, so Unity is a game engine, right? So it's built for games, so it's a virtual world. There's a camera associated for viewing that virtual world. So that's, uh, that's this one. So now let's, what we need to do is we actually need to import all the, uh, a series of packages. And these packages are related to augmented reality, uh, the, um, the, 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 the target resources, and the 3D objects. Those are all created with other tools that you have to bring into the, into the Unity environment. So let's actually start with, um, Let's start with the QCAR Unity extension. You can get this in two ways. You can go to developer.com and download it, or within Unity, within the Unity tool, there's an asset store, and you can actually go download it from the asset store if you want, uh, which brings it directly into the Unity environment, which is nice. I've downloaded it separately, and I've kept it here, so let's bring it. So let's bring this one in. Okay. So now we're going to bring in some other assets, including the 3D assets, the teapot and the steam. I got to bring those two in. So here's my teapot. So this is just, just basic administrative work of just trying to bring things into the environment. We really haven't gotten to the meat of it as yet. And then what I also have to bring in is the, um, are the target resources, right? I went, to all, I, went to a, I went online to my developer portal. I uploaded this image and another one, and I downloaded a resource file that comes in as a Unity package, uh, so demo.unity, and I'm going to bring this into my environment. All right, so now that we've brought everything in, now we have to actually construct our scene. So the first thing we want is this main camera. We don't really need it, okay, because this makes sense in a virtual game. It doesn't make sense in a AR game or AR experience, because in AR, what you need is a camera that's connected to the actual mobile phone camera that looks out into the world. So let's get rid of it, so we'll delete it. And then we'll go into this folder called the Qualcomm Augmented Reality folder, and then prefabs. And you'll see, well, there's an AR camera prefab out there. So we need to add this. So this is the very first thing you'll do. Always just add the AR camera prefab. The next thing you want to do is you want a natural feature image, and that's an image target. So we have to bring in the image target prefab. So notice this, it's blank right now, right? So we need, to get, we need to say that you have to recognize the stones target. So for that, you go into the inspector, and on the, when you, because you've clicked image target, you'll notice here there's image target behavior associated with it. And here there's a little drop down menu that says empty because we haven't yet assigned any texture. So we go pick stones, and it's there immediately. Okay, so now we've got the basic stuff. Now let's add some graphics to it. So we have to go into this tutorial folder, and what you'll see is the steam and the teapot. So let's get the teapot first. Okay, so there's your teapot. Now, what you have to do is you have to connect the teapot. The relationship of, is, of, the, of the experience is like this. When I point my phone at this, it recognizes this and then renders the teapot. When I take it away, the teapot's gone. So I have to connect the two together, right? So the teapot is really essentially a child of the image target, and that's how you do it. So it's always connected to that image target uh, prefab. Now we need to add some steam. 
actually, no, we need to add a script out here. So let's just add the trackable event handler script. So this is a script that we provide that controls that whole tracking behavior. We need to add that to the image target. Uh, the next thing is let's add some steam. So the steam, and so now I have to position the steam, right, on top of the spout. So here, when I put the steam, uh, steam here, I can actually see it from different angles. And it looks, oh, sorry. Yeah, so it looks like it's okay. It's okay. But the steam, again, is connected to the teapot. So I actually have to make this a child of the teapot. So you see how the entire relationship is being defined simply by dragging and dropping and writing some simple scripts. And I'm not going to show you any script writing here because the scripts are basically very simple. Uh, you know, Unity supports all kinds of, um, it supports JavaScript, Boo, C Sharp, any, anything that you want. Uh, you, can, you can just pull it in and it works, it works really nicely. Okay, so now the next thing that we need to do is we need to control the steam. We want the steam to come out. Actually, let me show you one really cool thing about Unity. Let's say you want to view the steam out here. You go into the inspector, right? There's an emit button out there. All you have to do is click it, and you can see this whole, so you can visualize it as you build it. And it's a really, I think it's a really, really cool and powerful tool. Um, so let's go back here, and we said we wanted a virtual button, right? And this virtual button is actually, this is another prefab that we want to put out here, and this prefab has to be on in the image target. <laughs> So that's really a child of the image target. But right now, the virtual button is a dot. So we have to size it. And the way to go, you can either resize it with a tool. I don't have a mouse with me, so I'm not going to try that. Instead, I'm just going to go and modify this. And you'll see how, I, as I modify it, it's beginning to take shape. Right. Maybe this is, two, one. Ah. Yeah, okay, That's, so that looks like a decent size. And then I can move this virtual button wherever I want. And so let's put it, um, Put it there, I guess, huh? Okay, so now that we position the virtual button, I still have to add a virtual button. I have to put my scripts, you know this one. Here's my virtual button event handler script. And this basically says, when I cover it, emit the steam. That's all it is. And if you go over this, right, it's, it's, it's a very, very simple script that's written. thing, every scene needs light, so you need to add some light. So let's go here to game object, let's create a directional light, right, and then yeah, so there we've given it some light. And that's pretty much it. So if I've done everything correctly, we should be able to build and uh, deploy on this phone. So I'm going to connect my phone up. OK. I'm going to do this. And then I go here to File, Build and Run. <coughs> 